we're all still kind of buzzing up after 253. Yeah. You know, and now what we're trying to figure out is, did Israel Adesanya look that amazing on, on that night, or did Paula Costa have a, a, a bad night or a bad game plan? So in your in your view, what, what exactly did we see that night? I think we saw a little bit of both that night. I think we saw Israel at a really high-level performance, and I think we saw Bohashinia that maybe wasn't well-adjusted to the time here. I did speak with um, his coach, Eric Albarasin, afterwards, and he said that Paulo really didn't sleep that much the night before, which is a real bummer. Um, he had only gotten a couple of hours of sleep. So while I don't think we necessarily saw the best Paulo, you know, I do think we saw the best Israel. I, you know what I mean? And so I think it was bad luck for Paulo. And, and also, honestly, John, like, he hasn't been that active, right? One fight each year for the last two years. Israel has a little more momentum coming into it. So to me, I just felt like it was a big ask to come over here on a time shift after a layoff like that and then perform at that high level, especially after you also built it up and like chalked it up so much, you know? So uh, I think it was a combination of a lot of a lot of difficult circumstances for him and and yeah and just and in Israel just looking fantastic yeah so a name that was coming out a lot afterwards was John Jones right yeah. in association with Adesanya in association with Jan Blahovich or yeah. still maybe the heavyweight title fight or something yeah. like that so I'm curious like from your point of view do, do one of those seem like the bigger fight or the more exciting fight like which one do you think like should happen next yeah I think the I thought it was kind of cheeky how you know John's like y'all mind if I just snatch my belt back you know um, to see that legendary Polish power against John would be incredible because I do think Jan could pretty much knock out anybody but um, but I think the sexier fight is Adesanya versus John just because stylistically they're both so phenomenal not to say that Jan isn't but you know what I mean I feel like that's the one that's going to be more stylistically interesting and both of them can talk such a good game too. I mean, like, because John can jaw, and if it was John and Jan, you know, Jan has a great sense of humor, but you wouldn't get that build up the same way either. I think if it was John and Israel, that would be pretty epic. No doubt. So yeah. looking at this week's card, Holly Holm, Arena Aldana. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the stakes there are pretty big in the yeah. division. Um, what do you think is going to be the key? Like, like when you're watching tape, you're right, right, right. Like, like, what do you think is going to determine how this fight plays out? Well, it'll be interesting because I. I if I'm if I'm honest, I really just want them to square up and bite down and just wail, you know, like throw punches. That's all I want. And I, I kind of hope Aldana brings back the boxer in Holly. Like, I, you know, she's been kicking so much and she's great at that. And obviously the head kick won her the championship. But I, w I would love her to move a little less like I hope Irani can not can cut the cage off octagon off and 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 get her to just bite down and throw down like I would love to see the last five minutes of Holloway Lamas between those two ladies you know what I mean especially to I don't know like they're both so talented like they have knockout power like I, we don't get to see that many knockouts in women's MMA so I think both of these women have the potential to do it um, they both have incredible takedown defense too though so I I think the difference maker will be, I don't know, man, who lands more, right? Because I know Holly's ground game has been getting better, um, and so maybe she would shoot for a takedown, but I believe Irene has the highest takedown defense or so. So good luck, you yeah. know, good luck. Nice. <laughs> Last thing for me, I want to ask you, like, other names on the card, like yeah. fights that maybe are flying on yeah. the radar, whether it be, you know, somebody that you've spoken to, that they right, have a right, great right. story, or a fight that you think is going to be just exciting. Like, what are some names yeah. or fights that people should pay attention to that maybe they're not? Well, I mean, I'm a huge Carlos Condit fan, you know, and so I know there's, you know, sometimes he's kind of like legacy fights, or I don't know what we want to call them anymore now, but when you have Court and Condit, it's like, they're both good dudes, you know, but I really, no disrespect to Court, but I would love to see Carlos get a win again. Like, this guy has had some hella bad luck. I remember being there uh, in Vancouver, right, when he fought Damien, and it was just like, 63 seconds later, you're like, he didn't even get to fight. You know what I mean? Like, win or lose, I just want to see Carlos be able to throw down and have an old-school, natural-born killer fight. Um, and also, obviously, I do want to see Jermaine Duran and me and Juliana Pena. Um, again, with the, the... I wish Juliana had been a little bit more active. I mean, obviously, she took time off to have the baby and everything. But, you know, after you win tough and stuff, it's, like, nice to see them succeed more. So I think she and Jermaine are going to have a, a, a good fight. And, you know, I'm lying if I, if I don't say that those women's fights often interest me more and I like Luma Lukbun me too um, you know I think she's exciting so uh, yeah I would say those are those are the ones that I'm probably most looking forward to Karen, you, you mentioned yeah. you heard that Paulo didn't really rest that much yeah. at all not to reveal any information sure. know, but if you could attribute that is that nerves is that uh, failing to adjust the new schedule what, what happened that made him unable to rest in the way that Israel perhaps did yeah from my understanding uh, 
throughout the camp, Paolo didn't sleep that much. Um, this is, you know, I, I spoke with Eric uh, in the in the restaurant, you know, the day after, and he kind of said he had some issues with sleep and that he doesn't, maybe he doesn't sleep a lot, so maybe he doesn't really allow himself that recovery time. Um, so part of it, I think, is a general tendency for him in this camp, they were saying. But then coming here, obviously, yeah, getting on this clock w was difficult. Um, but, you know, also, again, Eric, Eric kind of told me there were some things that they knew in camp that they maybe needed to change that they just didn't really fully address. You know the case. Remember when Weidman was winning, 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 and then he lost, and he's like, okay, now I can make some assess reassess some things that I knew I needed to fix. So Eric was sort of saying basically that you know like he knew there were some things during camp that were issues that they could have addressed or should have maybe addressed but but now that they know that the outcome wasn't what they hoped for it they'll really have to go and do it but look at the first loss for somebody it, it, it's it sucks to be in, to to be in front of the world and have it be for a title fight but it's also great that your first loss was for a title fight. Like, how big a baller are you that your title fight was your first loss? So um, I just hope that Bo Bohashinya just really grows from that and learns from that. I mean, it, everybody else lost to Israel, too, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so buck up, soldier, you know? <laughs> what did you make of uh, Israel and Asanya's celebration at the end with the dry humping and getting Captain Eric's face in? Um, you know... <laughs> a lot of times I'm supposed to be offended by things. Sure. Let's just put it that way. And a lot of times I'm not. So for the circumstances, I think it was appropriate, if that sounds right. Like just everything that had been building up to it. it, it, it look, I love good sportsmanship, right? I, lo I love that. I love when they hug it out after. But I'm not gonna lie. When if you t put it this, if if that was me, if if you talk mad crap to me and then I beat your ass, I'm gonna let you know I beat your ass. Like that's who I am. So um, I'm not the type that uh, will frown upon somebody celebrating that way. Um, I know some people were saying like I, I interviewed Israel afterwards backstage for the for the quick hits, and you know he he says the word bitch a lot. He says this and that, and he's like I beat him like a little bitch, and I'm like cool. Um, but like it doesn't it doesn't really bother me again like if if if, if I, I couldn't be in this business for this long if I was easily offended like we all know you know some stuff that has happened that I just let roll off my back it doesn't bother me um, so I, uh, I I thought in the moment I was like he kind of had it coming you know he kind of had it coming but uh, but I could see why it, some people would would be a little bit upset by it I, I definitely can understand why they would be Do but I think there's a double standard with how people react to Izzy's celebrations and interviews and everything. He seems to believe, like, if you look at Colby and you look at him, everyone's going to get mad at him, and he thinks there's a double standard. I, I mean, a, 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 yeah. There is sometimes like people people pick and choose whose confidence they like, right? People pick and choose who's got swagger and who's cocky. Like, which where does it go over the line, you know? Uh, and the same ones that might celebrate Colby, maybe for certain reasons don't like Israel Adesanya for certain reasons. I'm not going to try to like, you know, whatever, assume uh, anything like that. But um, I, yeah, I mean, I think if I'm honest, yeah, I do think that somebody like Israel is going to get criticized more for being for being confident than, than Colby would be. Yeah, I do think so. And then uh, one final one. You mentioned you do interviews backstage. Yeah. Laura does interviews. Yeah. Megan does interviews. Yeah. Do you think the next logical step is a female actually on the broadcast commentating. Well, yeah, no, I've actually spoken about that because uh, actually Angela and I were talking about that the other day. I want to do play-by-play. -play. And so we were saying what would be really cool would be like me doing play-by-play, -play, have Laura and Angela, you know, doing the, the commentary or something like that. Um, what I would love to do is uh, maybe get that going like on an alternate feed, like even if it's on Fight Pass, right? And you can tune in on Fight Pass and listen to us instead. And like, I know people, oh, we don't need a chick feed for MMA or whatever. But guess what? A lot of chicks like fights. And it's different. It would be it would be something different to do. I'm not we're not trying to force it on anybody, but I think it would be a really cool idea. Um, I know for me, like I've never actually sat down and done the play by play, but when I'm watching fights and when I'm watching my tape, I'm trying to call it in my head. John John Anik is so good. He sets such a high standard. Um, so I definitely have had people to learn from. You know, I started out in Showtime Championship Boxing years ago. That's where I went first, and I remember um, talking to the guys there about what makes a good commentator and what makes a good play by play person, and they were basically saying they're like, look, you know. Um, don't pretend to know what you don't know and speak to the action in front of you. Um, and so I believe that's the approach that I would have. And even though I do think I know some things, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't, I wouldn't 
try to be predictive with what I think is coming. Yes, I would think, okay, maybe he looks like to be setting up an armbar or something like that, but um, I know that I would have the ability to just actually speak to the action and let whomever is doing the commentating shine because, I mean, really, basically, that's what I, I feel like I am, like a, a quarterback a lot of the time. I, I, I feel like, um, you know, when people joke sometimes with Bisping, if they're on the post show, they're like, Bisping looks like he was a little tipsy. <laughs> I'm like, Bisping might have been a little tipsy, but you know what? It doesn't matter because um, I don't care if the passengers on the bus are drunk, but I'm the bus driver, so I'm not going to be drunk, but, uh, but you can do whatever you need to do, right? So um, I really do feel like part of the reason I've been able to be successful is because I, I haven't made it about me. Like, it's the old uh, adage that if you make the other people feel comfortable, you're doing your job right, you know what I mean? So that's how, how I've always tried to approach it and not make it about me and not make it my, it's not about me, the show is not about me. Um, if I can facilitate the conversation, if I can help you look good, then I'm, that's what I'm there for. Uh, so yeah, I, th I, I would love to do that. Uh, we don't see a lot of women in this sport. Yeah. Right, so right. We even had this talk uh, one of these days. Yeah. Uh, what can you say to encourage women to join a sport? I know right. that some girls feel feel like intimidated, all the guys feel intimidated. Right, by right, us, right. Uh, because we know about the sport and all that. Yeah. Well, I would definitely encourage women to try to get involved in it, but I would always say what I what I always say from the beginning, you know, like you can't just be a cute face. If you think you're going to get in here and be successful just because you're really cute, um, that might last a week or two. You know, um, I know from the time that I started covering, you know, we started MMA Heat in 2007. Um, and so I've been covering this for a long time. And I, I remember seeing a lot of different women come and go in that time because they weren't there with any substance. They were there just looking cute and being flirty and whatever. And they didn't really bring any substance. So I always tell people, like, good looks help. And you know, look at there's this there's a certain requirement for women on television. We know that, that, that you need to be presentable or whatever, but um, you really just need to know your facts. If you know your facts, if you know what you're talking about, come with some confidence and don't be afraid. But again, don't pretend to know what you don't know. And don't be afraid to ask questions. I, I, I think there's a lot more opportunity for people now, like with all the social media that you can really start to get your own things going. And maybe for the women who want to get started, maybe don't sit there and for your first call, try to interview John Jones, but maybe for your first call, try to interview someone on John's team or somebody let's on the prelims or go down to a local gym. I mean, that's where we started. I used to spend so much time at Rain Training Center and King's MMA and all that and just like getting to know the fighters and stuff there and building the trust with them there. and. Um, find a gym near you. Go just, just start practice. Do it in your living room. I mean, it's not that hard. It can be hard to get noticed, but now there's so many more ways to get your own voice out that I would say if anybody has the idea to do it, uh, go for it. What, it. what? I just moments ago read a quote from Rich Franklin on Twitter. He said something I don't consider somebody a failure who doesn't achieve their dreams. I consider them a failure if they don't go for their dreams. I'm paraphrasing, but I was like, Amen. Like, that's how I feel about it. And just to finish that thought, you started a long time ago. Yeah. And yet I'm still 25. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what changes have you seen throughout the years? Chicks in MMA, baby. No, I love it. Um, you know, that's one of the huge things. I remember, um, you know, obviously for the longest time, you know, there weren't any women there. And I remember being in Seattle and Nate it was fighting Benson and that was in the press conference when they had Rhonda come out and give her her belt and everything and then we knew she was going to be fighting. That was really exciting because I'd already interviewed Rhonda a bunch of times down at Dynamics MMA in Santa Monica because I was hustling and just, you know, learning how to talk to people and stuff. Um, so obviously that's a huge change and we know that, you know, when the women are on the card now, everybody knows, well, women have a real good chance of getting fight of the night now. So that's been really cool. I will say, um, you know, the, the level of technique is so incredible now. The, the level uh, uh, of the athletes now. And now you have people that started at age 16 um, who have just been indoctrinated with every element of MMA. Like, the level of the game is so high now um, that, you know, like for in a lot of like in the women's strawweight division for example like there's so much parity among them there's so much high quality girls that like you can these girls can fight each other for five years and and you know swap places all the time they, they're just it's exciting to me um but you know i will say there's a part of me though too like when we see the carloses and when we see you know i was here last time and Little Nog retired, and you know Shogun's only got a couple more, and Damien's got a couple more, and Anderson only maybe is on the way. And so a lot of the people that I covered when I first started are either already done or are finishing up. And so 
that's a little strange to see the passage of time, but um, there's so much more exciting young talent that um, that that you know you always just get re-inspired. And so like next thing you know, yeah, an Israel Adesanya comes around, and you're like, we might have the second coming of Anderson Silva, and hell yeah, <laughs> sure. Really quick, yeah. Brown, right? I did go to Brown. Why haven't UFC gone to Rhode Island? Ha, dude. Okay, so. I'm from okay, wicked good. Yeah, so we, um, Mike Ricci and I were talking about that because um, I haven't. I'm a little sour about this uh, that I haven't gotten to work any of the Boston shows ever. Like, right. which is bum, bum me out. I did go that time um, when Shale and, and Shogun were there. Uh, you know, I was covering it from my own side and like, you know, first met Connor backstage there, which was cool. But um, yeah, so the Rhode Island show, we were talking about that because we we're like, look, it, it's a little roady, but like, people would come from New York, people would come from Connecticut, people would come from Massachusetts. We could just do it right downtown. Providence like when I was in school there like Providence was a dump buddy Cianci was like getting reelected and everything and it was kind of like it, the, the city was still run by the mob and everything okay fine but um but uh they the best Italian food oh my god up in Federal Hill was so good right I just go to Camille's Roman Garden all night long like, I took the chili peppers there after a show at the living room um but uh yeah like you know but um we need a show in Rhode Island I absolutely one of my producers Mike Ricci we have we literally have spoken about it over and over and over again I would love to have a show in Providence that'd be It'd be great because then I, I figured I would go back to school. You know what I mean? I could do some talks over there and stuff like that. Like while I was back, because I loved Brown. Like I loved it. I had such a good time there. Do you think it just takes a fighter from Rhode Island to make it big? Maybe. I mean, I know we have a lot of guys. Like there's guys from Fall River, which is really close. You know, to Rhode exactly Fall River. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. But I mean, um, or maybe it's just like maybe if we. Maybe we get a good rate on the arena or something like that. I don't know. Like, um, yeah, I would. I would love it. I don't know what it would take. Maybe that's it. Just somebody from that area to really kind of could have put it put a stamp on the on the need for it. But there's so many great fighters in New England. I mean, we let's hit up Calvin Cater and just have him like get all his boys up there. And I mean, like, there's so many good people we could have on a card. Yeah. So there are four cards left. Yep. Is there any fight you're looking forward the most? Khabib and Justin. <laughs> I mean, come on. Because Justin is fearless and Habib's the man. Um, and so I'm really, really curious to see how that one plays out. Um, and I'm really excited for the return of Brian Ortega. I don't want to just big time on these main events or whatever, but um, but Brian is so good and it's just been so long that, since we've seen him. And uh, with the Korean zombie being that dangerous, I'm really I'm actually really, really excited about those two uh, those two main events. Yeah. We're talking about Habib, what do you think makes him so special that no one seems to know how to find the keys to, to beat him? I, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, he, he, he must be just, I, I, he's incredibly strong, obviously. Um, the fact that, you know, obviously I work with DC a lot and uh, just the stuff that he would tell me about, you know, training with Khabib and stuff, like, there's just that, he has that unbreakable confidence, really, of knowing he, how successful he's been for so many years and at such a high level. And also he's, I don't know, I feel like he knows he carries the mantle for so many other people, too, and he really sort of takes pride in that. Um, I really see him as somebody that um, really respects the game and respects uh, the sport and has just, like, always taken it so seriously, and, and I just find that really admirable. Um, you know, and I know the stuff with Connor got a little dicey or whatever, and, and that's really why that upset me. Because I remember after that fight, I, that really kind of threw me off because I expect, I actually really expect a lot from Khabib. I don't, I, I like, I never expected him to, to like stoop so low, if I'm being honest. You know what I mean? So, um, I was really sort of taken aback by that because he's always carried himself so well and he's always carried himself as such a champion that I find that very admirable. Yeah. Cool. Okay. cool. All right. Thank you. Yeah, let's go to Rhode